breaking news from Pfizer. The company now saying its COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective for kids aged 5 to 11. We're getting a first look into what the trials looked like and how soon they could seek emergency approval from the FDA. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the latest. This morning, Pfizer announcing that its vaccine is safe and effective for children ages 5 through 11, and they will be asking the FDA for authorization in the coming weeks. The announcement coming along with the first look at the company's trial data giving its vaccine to children. The company says the trial gave more than 2,200 children a dose one-third the amount given to adults and found that it produced minimal side effects similar to adults and older children. And Pfizer says the results, which haven't been peer-reviewed, show the antibody response at that dose in children was at least as strong as the full adult dose in patients 16 to 25. Jennifer Macklem's two daughters participated in the trial and now says she hopes they were among the subjects who got that dose. But amid worsening infections in children across the country, the teacher is thankful to be one step closer to the vaccine being available for all school children. I teach high school, so my room is a lot safer, whereas my kids, like a third grade classroom, She's probably the only third grader that had the opportunity to vaccinate already in her school. And then my kindergartner, she's probably the only kindergartner that's eligible to be vaccinated in her school. So having other people that can be vaccinated just means it's that, that much safer in my mind for them. This news comes as hospitals are seeing a record number of cases of pediatric admissions, with some hospitals running out of ICU beds. We have certainly been seeing a large volume of children presenting to our emergency department, certainly in our primary care network. Um, and we're calling this a surge. We're, we're seeing this as another wave. As hospitals see these upticks, the debate over COVID policies in schools rages on. If this is approved, almost every K through 12 student in the country will be eligible to get vaccinated. Experts say that while children are currently not eligible, everyone that is should go out and get the shot. The best way to protect our children is to vaccinate our community um, so we reduce the risk of infection spread in our school systems. Robbie Walker, a Florida father of six, regrets not getting vaccinated. After he came down with COVID and pneumonia in both lungs, his wife tried calling 169 hospitals before he had to be flown to Connecticut for an advanced treatment. I just knew that at that point that was like our saving grace. If I had to do this over again, I would have been vaccinated a long time. And Pfizer is expected to have its results in children under the age of five sometime later this year. Kira. Eva Pilgrim, thank you so much. Let's bring in infectious disease specialist at South Shore Health and ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Todd Ellerin this morning. Todd, good to see you. Let's talk about how big of a deal this is and when you think we could expect them to seek emergency FDA approval. You know, Kira, I think this is a big deal, right? I mean, kids are obviously making up a, a large minority of cases right now across the country. So to break this chain of transmission that has been so virulent in the U.S. and around the world, we really need to get the emergency use authorization in this group. And I do think we could get this sooner than I even anticipated. I thought it would be the end of the year, but now perhaps at some point in October, um, the FDA could, could lead to a, a, an emergency use authorization. So that's good news. Well, as we know, pediatric cases make up a large amount of our country's COVID cases right now. So what would having kids under 11 vaccinated actually do for the fight against COVID here in the U.S.? Well, let's face it, there's so many positive aspects about this. I mean, as parents, right, for knowing that our children are safer either when they go to school or when they're playing in a sporting event. I mean, just think about the kids who have had COVID and the concerns about getting them back into school, having them isolated, having them miss 10 days of school, not being able to get back on the sports field for, for a number of months until they get checked out by their pediatrician. And besides the fact the chains of transmission, concerned about grandma who's, you know, that, that your child may infect uh, someone who's vulnerable. There are so many benefits to this vaccine. I believe the, be the benefits far ex exceed the risks. All right, so as parents, let me ask you a question. I have 10 year old twins and you know, we don't know really about long-term effects, right? Our kids are still growing. So as a physician, would you trust getting your kids vaccinated if this gets approved and if they were that age? Should parents feel confident about this? 
Well, Carrie, you, you really made the important point is if it gets authorized by the FDA, the FDA is going to look at this through a, an intense lens of safety. We want to make sure there aren't any increased cases of myocarditis or other things that we've heard can occur rarely. So as long as the FDA gives that stamp of approval and then, of course, the CDC gives the recommendation, 100% I would be getting my kids vaccinated. Of course, my kids are, have already been vaccinated, so. <laughs> You're lucky, all right. So on a separate yeah. note, Todd, I wanna ask you about the FDA's independent advisory panel. It rejected President Biden's boosters for all plan on uh, Friday. So instead, it's opting to recommend the third Pfizer shots only for those ages 65 plus or at high risk of severe COVID. So what happens next here? Well, first of all, what I want to say is I think the FDA made the right call, all right? We just don't have enough information on boosters to, to broadly recommend it for young, healthy kids. You know, they do so well anyways, they likely will do incredibly well once they've been vaccinated. So agree with that. As far as the vulnerable population, that makes sense, the booster, especially since winter is coming. Remember, after the FDA gives its app uh, approval, which it did, now next, the advisory committee for the CDC is, to, is supposed to meet middle of this week. And once they make the recommendation, which I expect they, they will, then the vulnerable people or those at high risk for, for contracting COVID-19 can go out and get their booster. Dr. Todd Ellerin, great to see you this morning. Thanks, Todd. You bet. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.